have these lies upended your client's life. So that's the, that's the cause, all these lies put out there by a whole bunch of individuals, including on Fox. That's the cause. What was the effect on Ray Epps' life? And all the lies they tell, I mean, he has now been victim and seen up close how reckless and how little they care about truth and facts. You know, sometimes I feel like this channel's original mission, which was exposing Democrat Party propaganda masquerading as just the facts and news, has become obsolete because it's like they don't even hide it anymore. Take this interview between Jake Tapper and the lawyer for Ray Epps. Sounds like a good chance to do some real journalism and get to the bottom of some burning questions surrounding this very mysterious figure, right? No, you idiot! And we'll get right into this insane interview right after this quick message from our sponsor, Noble Gold. The US dollar has lost 85% of its value since the 70s when the dollar decoupled from gold and the government seems bent on continuing the tradition. From now until the next elections, the government can print as much money as it wants. The last time they did that, inflation went up 9%. Gold is the one asset that has proven to withstand inflation. When you invest in gold with Noble Gold Investments, you will also get a 24 karat, one quarter ounce gold standard coin for free. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com right now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com, the only gold company I trust. And remember, there's always risk in investment and there are no guarantees of any kind. Lawsuit claims Fox and the host suggested repeatedly that your client was part of a secret FBI plot to orchestrate the January 6th riot. Obviously, mm -hmm. the January 6th riot. Mm -hmm. The January 6th riot. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir, but I thought it was the January 6th insurrection. Now suddenly you're calling it a riot? Fapper isn't alone. The marching orders clearly went out to start downplaying it for some reason. Instead of calling it an insurrection, they're now calling it a riot, protest, rally, and even a demonstration. If only they would have left some sort of clue. Make no mistake, this is to shift the narrative now that this ludicrous lawsuit is going on and they will be defending a guy who's on video for multiple days telling people to enter the Capitol. Lawsuit claims Fox and the host suggested repeatedly that your client was part of a secret FBI plot to orchestrate the January 6th riot. Obviously, a nutty false theory. I'm sorry to stop again, but trust me, it's worth it. What Tapper just said there is false. They're suing Fox News for claiming that Ray Epps was a quote, undercover FBI agent. And they do that very specifically to parse words. Words like informant, which Epps may have been instead of an agent. But the lawsuit itself always specifically says agent. We've seen FBI officials and Ray himself do this, specifically denying agents were involved. Check out this part of the lawsuit to see what I mean. To reiterate, Fox did not falsely assert that Epps was a federal agent acting with a legitimate law enforcement purpose. And here's the kicker. Fox did not falsely assert that Epps was an informant for a federal agency. Instead, Fox falsely asserted that Epps was a federal agent who was encouraging and inciting others to engage in unlawful activities. And not just any unlawful activities, but rather to engage in an attack on the United States Capitol and democracy itself. Weird how the language of this ties right into the Democrat state media's narrative. And Epps was in fact caught on video telling people to enter the Capitol. But if Fox had called him an informant and not an agent, then they wouldn't be filing this lawsuit. The lawsuit seems to be admitting that he was an informant. How how have these lies upended your client's life? What are the lies, Jake? That he was inciting people to enter the Capitol? That he told his nephew that he orchestrated it? What lies? What was the, so that's the, that's the cause, all these lies put out there by a whole bunch of individuals, including on Fox, but well, we've also heard Republicans in the House and Senate spewing them as well, or at least push it, leaning into them. What was the effect? That's the cause. What was the effect on Ray Epps' life? <laughs> the moment that Fox and Mr. Carlson began talking about Ray Epps on their shows, uh, Ray Epps and his wife began receiving death threats in the mail, in voicemails, in text messages. He, uh, Ray became a focal point of the right-wing conspiracy theory after Fox began talking about him, and it took off, and the viewers and others began harassing and intimidating and threatening 
both Ray and Robin. Ray Epps is such a victim. It's not like he created the whole situation himself by literally telling people to enter the Capitol. It's the people who are asking questions about why he wasn't charged or why the media is suddenly defending somebody involved in January 6th who are the real culprits here. Don't ask questions because if you ask questions, then they get death threats, which means they're above criticism and scrutiny. Only they may do that. Only they may attack and demonize. And do you ever hear about the Republicans and conservatives or their other targets who receive death threats? Of course not. Your client, Mr. Epps, uh, is, he's, for, or at least he was, you know, a big, big believer in Donald Trump. Uh, he was there because he believed in the stop the steal cause and all that. He used to watch Fox or maybe he still does, I don't know. But has any of this caused him to rethink all of these people, including that particular TV channel and, and all the lies they tell. I mean, he has now been victim and seen up close how reckless and how little they care about truth and facts. <laughs> Fact, Ray Epps is on video for multiple days telling people to enter the Capitol. He's at the front as the riot begins and seems to be taking part. Then he gets removed from the FBI wanted list and never charged. On top of that, the media who hate and demonize anyone associated with January 6th is now suddenly running cover for Epps and calling anyone who questions this guy nutty and spreading baseless conspiracy theories which it's anything but. Notice how he's completely uninterested in the guy who's actually on video telling people to enter the Capitol, but instead is focused on demonizing anybody who does ask questions. Here you have a guy who claims to be a serious, trustworthy journalist who literally calls the guy who's on video telling people to enter the Capitol on January 6th a victim of reporters and everyday people who ask obvious questions. Tapper didn't ask one critical or probing question about Ray Epps. Obvious questions that any thinking person would wonder about this story. Like why Ray Epps wasn't charged or why Ray Epps was there in the first place and so adamant about people entering the Capitol. Like I said earlier, he admitted in text messages that he orchestrated the whole thing, yet that doesn't come up even once. According to Revolver News, one of the Oath Keeper leaders who was charged with organizing the riot, Stuart Rhodes, was given a special no prosecution deal. They also reported that Epps worked with Rhodes in Arizona. What a coincidence. Seems odd and raises questions, right? <laughs> Not if you're a state propagandist. Instead, we have Jake Tapper on CNN calling Ray Epps a victim of reporters and people who asked too many questions and pointed out too many inconsistencies. Jake Tapper cannot ask any of these questions because they would destroy the FBI's narrative. No doubt Jake is telling himself that he's saving democracy as he cashes those juicy checks. All right, folks, special thanks to Tom Elliott and Julie Kelly for the research they did and I included in this video. If you found it in informative and enjoyed it please hit that like button share subscribe and make sure to leave a comment to vent some of those frustrations